Welcome to Behind the Badge with your special guest, Lieutenant Williams. Your new source for all things police in the city of Bondurant. KFIZ Today continues on a Friday at 810. That's Behind the Badge, our weekly visit with the Fond du Lac Police Department. Lieutenant Ryan Williams is here, and we introduced her to the audience a couple of weeks ago, but this is her first full week in her new position. Your tag team partner's here with us. Yes, I got uh, Cammy Van Der Mullen. I, I, it's going to be hard for me to uh, not call her Detective Van Der Mullen, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to try to start doing that. Uh, but she's here with us, and she is officially in her new job. So tell, us, uh, tell everyone what you're going to do now. Yeah, so I'm very excited. I've uh, been in my new role now for two days. So um, there's going to be a lot of learning, obviously, for a while, but um, I'm going to be helping primarily with recruiting and uh, retention. So working alongside Lieutenant Williams and um, trying to um, encourage people to apply for our great department and come work with us and stay with us. How does it feel? Obviously, you're very new into this, but having done you know, being a detective and everything else you've done with the police department to be switching gears at this point in your career. How does that feel? Uh, you know, I really have loved all of the things that I've done. I loved being on patrol and being a field training officer. I loved being in the schools as a school resource officer, and I loved being a detective. I mean, I've been very fortunate. I've worked with some really great people and had some really great supervisors along the way, but I'm super excited at this point in my career to transition to something that um, I just feel like is going to be able to um, allow me to really connect with new officers and um, encourage them to apply for our department and um, encourage them along their journey. Um, you know, you get to a point in your career where, I don't want to say I'm at the sunset, but <laughs> towards towards the end. Yeah, third you know, quarter, maybe starting the fourth. Correct. And you start looking back a little bit, I think, on um, you know what's going to happen to the department after you're gone. And it becomes... Um, something that I, I care a lot about. I care a lot about this profession. I care a lot about the police department that I've spent my entire career at, and I want to see it, you know, continue to um, become a people first organization where they really care about the employees. I want to see it um, become a really well trained department where those officers are very, you know, competent and, and excel at their own career journeys and paths, and also that they provide the, the best service to the citizens of the city. Lieutenant, how valuable is it to have somebody like Cammie who's been with this department her entire career and has been in several different positions to now be in this position? I think it's great. I mean, she's a role model for a lot of other officers in her department. And just just, uh, just having that background, uh, uh, it's nice because she, she, she knows a little bit about everything, right? And... Uh, Whatever people's interests are, she can kind of steer them in the right way of things that work for her and, and didn't work. And as you can see, she's better on the radio than I am too. So, uh, so uh, very, very good and fit for the position. And the thing is like, you know, this is a new position and, and we don't know exactly what it's gonna look like entirely. But, um, it, you know, it, it's nice that we have, a, we offer the opportunity of Fond du Lac to, for her to, you know, still stay with the department, but kind of, it's probably gonna be less stress and more fun. Um, hopefully, um, that's the goal of this new position, and that we uh, offer a position that allows our officers to do that. So um, as they, you know, as as they move on in their career and stuff like that. And selfishly for you, what does this mean for you and free you up to get to do more of? Well, ultimately, it should be a, a little bit off my plate. Um, and we kind of, I'm still gonna be doing a lot, but uh, what we what we feel is, you know. Uh, Cammy's gonna be doing the recruiting and, ret and retention stuff, and I'm gonna still be helping with that. But she's gonna be the main person on that. Um, training has always been my passion, so I'm gonna still be the main person on training. But um, with training, so that's that's a lot of things that that, that that leads to retention of people. So she's gonna still be helping me with training and that. So as a team, we're gonna be really we, we're gonna work well together. Um, you can see some of our work on YouTube already. We, are, I think, we're due for another video here I shortly. Think so too. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's we're going to work good as a team together, and just can't wait to see what the future holds. It's exciting. We're looking forward to talking with you on a semi-regular basis. I think we're still trying to figure out what that schedule is going to be. You're not completely leaving us, LT. No, they'll still have to listen to me from time to time. But uh, you know, we, we'll figure that out. Yeah. We will. We will. And uh, we're coming off the heels of the Christmas parade in downtown Fond du Lac last weekend. Uh, and how'd that go for you? For a broadcast perspective, it was great. I had a lot of fun on uh, the air and more than 50 entries. So that was up from the prior year. And 
I did not obviously get a chance to walk the route because I was stationed at the beginning and doing the broadcast. But from what I was hearing from my colleagues, that's a tremendous turnout. I mean, three, four deep on the sidewalks all the way down Main Street. So the weather cooperated better than it had the year previous. So it sounds like a lot of people came out. And uh, what about from your guys' perspective? So I was uh, in the Bearcat, I actually was leading one of our teams, and people were like, well, I, why do you need a Bearcat? And obviously from Waukesha, we're still, um, we're preparing for the worst, hoping for the best. Um, but it was kind of surreal, because we were watching the parade from the Bearcat, and we had your broadcast on uh, while we were watching the parade. You were listening. Yes, yeah, we were listening. Um, obviously, it missed time with where we were at, uh, as far as, uh, you know, what you were seeing and stuff like that, but it was, it was still pretty cool. And... And honestly, it was a great time to, uh, we had a lot of people from the community come up to us and, and we took a bunch of pictures with, with, with people and stuff like that. So it was a great kind of a community event and show, you know, that we're not like very militaristic, that we're, we're just there to, to help. And, and the thing is, we have to be approachable as far as, especially for children or, 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 or other people, because they could be in some sort of um, uh, life altering event or, or some traumatic event and we might be their only thing that can save them and we have to be they have to know that they can come to us and trust us for help and uh i think being a part of things like that also helps um break down those barriers as far as the police and the community absolutely i agree we appreciate everything that uh, you guys did to make it safe and uh did you get a chance to take in the parade at all i i did not i had uh, a, a weekend planned with my cousins and my sister so it was Sounds like a lot of fun yeah it was a, a time to get together and just be around each other and that wasn't it wasn't something we could make unfortunately it was very well attended though like I, yeah i was pretty amazed by the amount of people and the amount of candy like they were they, they <laughs> put out a lot of there's kids put out. we don't know throw the candy we we, we throw hand the it candy. out right is that, i didn't no. see anybody throwing any candy. no no they were handing it out um yes there was no throwing of candy but it was uh there was a lot of bags full of wow. some people yeah so it was, it was pretty good and we got the judges who sit next to us so there was a lot of bribery going on so we were divvying up all the pieces that were handed to us yes. throughout the parade it was uh, way more than we needed. it looked like halloween i kept referring to you maybe heard that if you yeah. know how closely you were listening to the broadcast and we did have a little technical issue i did get a free piece of cheese so i i, I, I caught the string cheese one yes. out of it and it did a nice snag there I i'll tell you the, the person that was handing out the cheese now just because we were the swat and we were back a little bit they had to they did have to like get it to me um, but so they, they had a good arm. <laughs> someone else was handing out bananas too. I yes, we got like, bananas. Someone gave us a bunch of bananas in our bear cat. Yeah, it is it great. And then my favorite float is uh, the hot air balloon guy. Oh my gosh! Because it's so geez. warming. Like you know, everyone's cold watching the parade, and then uh, so they come by and you know blow the hot air and. And it's it's crazy. It just it really warms you up. Yeah. So to, to you obviously, yeah, you weren't there. So what's your best way to describe? Uh, that's it's just uh, a big fireball. <laughs> that's pretty much it. Yeah. He. Uh, I, I just learned this today. So he was. You know, I don't know if he didn't have enough whatever powers it. So he had asked one of my teammates, "Hey, where are the judges at? Because I can probably only do this thing four or five times on the parade route. So I want to make sure that I do that." in front of the judges and yeah just like you would see for a hot air balloon they pull whatever they do and it shoots the big flame up he was yeah. shooting that big flame off of that's the floor. amazing it, wow i i had a chance to watch it down the street then and yeah. to see that down Main street this big flame going up in the air it's pretty pretty wild but yeah, yeah. great creativity i uh, appreciate everybody and, who took part in that and you know i'm always about the parking and uh we you know i made sure we got we we posted um, the play, parade parking really well. Um, we put those signs everywhere. I don't think you could go anywhere without seeing parking restrictions. Um, and, and it went pretty well. We didn't have to. We didn't have too many issues. But we are still having people um, not adhere to the winter parking ordinances, and they're getting kind of surprised uh, when they get tickets. And you know, we, we've done everything. We've come, we've come on here and talked about it. We've we put out warning placards um, on our Facebook page. We, there was a video on the, the winter parking. People are still confused about it. Uh, so I just want to put out another blurb to say that it does override all other parking restrictions and that it matters what the day is at 8 o'clock p.m. So at, at 8 o'clock p.m., whatever day it is, that's the side of the street. And the sides are determined by the house numbers. Um, so more simply put, the even sides are the west side and the south side, and obviously the odds are the other one. So um, we'd like to see that. We're actually, 
um, have a lot of, of officers um, that are upholding that. So to the point where we're actually having people that have parked on streets that uh, are maybe obscure streets that have never gotten a ticket before, but um, officers are making sure that everybody's in compliance now as they should. So they're like, well, I've never gotten a ticket before. Well, but you weren't in accordance with the ordinance before and that is the correct ordinance. So uh, just be watchful, watchful for that. And we just wanna make sure that snow is coming at some point and we want the, uh, the plows to be able to get through. Great reminder and uh, might have some snow this weekend. We'll see what the, what the forecast brings. Final note, a fun one, the elf hunt. So a reminder <laughs> for the listeners, what exactly is the elf hunt and how is it going? So it started two years ago when um, you know we were we were very short staffed at that time, and my officers um, were getting forced over a lot. And I kind of went to my other um, admin staff and said, "We got to do something, like just something to raise their spirits." And uh, a couple of years before that, the city did a Little Lost Elf contest, um, and uh, we we actually were we had some officers kind of trying to look for it and trying to figure it out or whatever. Um, and I thought, what a great idea to do something like that. And, and people are like, well, are the officers playing games? Well, they are looking for clues, but the clues are usually hidden in spots where we want officers to patrol more often as well. So um, you're actually getting more patrol. And, and uh, I think it was last year, we actually found some, so we had some pretty good arrests um, based off people when they were looking in areas for elf clues. But there's clues hidden throughout the city and the officers have to find them and from these clues they have to figure out how to unlock this case that's at the, the Montelac Police Department. And uh, so they're, they're doing that, they're out there. Uh, I release, release a new clue every day. This is obviously just internal for the, for the police department to find, but if you do see extra patrol in areas, uh, that might be what it is um, if they have time. Now I was talking to my second shifter and they, they usually don't have much time to, be looking for elf clues and stuff like that, but um, a lot of times they can try to figure it out from the clues and they, they know a more specific place to look. But it's been really fun. Uh, we've already had, I know, one one officer find a clue and he shared it with he, what he thought was the rest of his second shift friends and there was a day shifter on there because it's shift oh. for shift for shift. Yeah. So now um, first shift and second shift both have at least one clue found. Um, so yeah, he was kind of embarrassed about that, as he should be. I'm assuming they lead the clues so that other the other shifts. Yeah, can there's find rules. Them. If they cannot mess with them, they can't block them. They can't remove them, um, or they'll be disqualified. So yes, they have to uh, leave leave the clues there. And how many again? Total? Well, there's there's six throughout the city. Okay. So, so I have revealed that already. So we're, we're all good. You're anticipating this to be done. Usually takes about two weeks. Um, I will I will release the clue right now, which okay. is a good one, because uh, so I'm the programmer of the games, the runner of the games, right? The game cannot be completed until the sixth clue is released. Like it would be impossible to complete the game until after the sixth clue is released, because um, they're not gonna be able to figure out how to unlock it without that. So that was the clue right there. That's the clue. Mm -hmm. Okay, you got me thinking. Yeah, I talk in riddles. We can talk off the air. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm going to ask you this. So, I get to work tomorrow morning, Saturday. And last December, I had to work a Saturday morning. And we had a couple of guys pull up here from your squad. And because you had something radio wise or whatever, they yeah. thought it was our satellite dish. It was not. But uh, this clue that you just released, or any of these clues, should I be concerned that the. I think are it's funny you should here? say that. I think they're coming because. Um, we had a clue, uh, I, I don't want to reveal too much, but there was, there was a rabbit that appeared on one of the clues. And uh, an officer looked at the history of Fond du Lac and found that a former owner of this radio station, rabbit, yeah. last name was Rabbit. <laughs> and uh, so, yeah, I think you're, you're- So I might get some visitors. You may be getting some visitors. <laughs> so, and, and maybe it's here, maybe it's not, right? They were trying to grease me. Last year, they were trying to get some information out of me, and I said, "Hey, I tried to get it out." Of this is why you don't actually. You tried it. I tried getting it from you off the air. Right. You would not tell me, and that's a good thing because yeah, you had some officers. Yeah, was like, very careful. And they were really said very tight. I mean, they were interrogating yeah. me. They're like, "I don't believe you." <laughs> Williams told me. I'm like, "No." That's I tough when you got cops to like interrogate. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, good time. We'll catch you guys uh, next week. Congratulations again, Cammy. Looking Thank forward you. to having you on the radio more in the future. This is Find the Badge, KFIZ Today.